Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh.
As I always feel that we could never sufficiently thank Bhagwan for all that he is doing for us, especially the Nama chanting that we are able to continue day after day after day. This is no small grace. How can we ever thank you? But we can continue to remember his name, we can continue to do things the way he wants us to do. And there are ever so many teachings of Bhagwan. Bhagwan always said, take up one teaching and practice it all your life and you will reach farther. Of course, the most important of all the teaching is to remember His name. If possible, all the twenty-four hours, if not, as much as we can. This is what He used to say. And we are saw yesterday how No matter what God we worship, no matter how many gods, how many forms of God, how many names of God exist, they all point to the one divine substratum, the one divinity behind all appearances behind the whole creation. And that one divinity, let's not forget, is seated right inside our heart. So, we see Bhagwan treating people differently in different circumstances, but always pointing to the one divinity. Like we saw yesterday, songs of praise of Minakshi in front of the picture of Bhagwan Yogiram Sarutama and who will bless them? Sri Rama, Lord Sri Rama. And again we saw recently how one Lakshman, a devotee, had an experience that in his place the Divine Mother's name is Parvatavaddini. So he went and did Bilvarchana and prayed. He sang the Shyamala, showed us the Nama. And then he prayed to her to bless him with the Guru, the right Guru. And also he said, Mother, I have so many problems. I do not know how to handle them. I do not know how to tide over them. But I am leaving all my problems at your feet. These are my problems. Please take care. And then the following early morning he had a dream in which Bhagwan. Yogi Ram Sarutkuma was seated in a chair and immediately Lakshman ran to him, held on to his feet and cried out, Yogi Ram Sarutkuma. And you know what Bhagwan said? Why? You have already submitted your problems to me. He spoke Whatever Lakshman spoke in front of the Divine Mother, Bhagwan was repeating in the dream, the early morning dream, to Lakshman. So Lakshman understood that the Divine Mother Parvadavaddini 
Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar or any other deity. They're all one and the same. The names and forms may be different, but the one divinity behind it all is the same. Now we also know, I think quite some time back, early perhaps one year now, two ladies, village ladies, had come to Bhagwan in some of the street house. It was the evening and Bhagwan made them sit for quite some time and it was getting dark. So they became restless because they had to go to the temple of the Divine Mother, Mariamma. They also had vowed to do puja there and they were carrying all those puja. Some agrees, they call it, the items, the puja items that are necessary for the worship of the Divine Mother. But Bhagwan, when they said, Swami, we have to go to Mariamma temple and do some puja there, as we had vowed, so please let us go. You know what Bhagwan said? It is dark now already. Whatever puja you want to do before the Divine Mother, you can do here to this beggar. And surprisingly, those women did not object to it, did not think it strange at all, and very happily they did the puja, they did the arati to Bhagwan. And Bhagwan so graciously accepted it and raised both his hands in benediction and showers of blessings upon them. So there were moments when it was necessary he revealed the innate divinity, the ultimate divinity that he was, that he is. And now, some time back, quite some time, maybe one year back, Jaya Karthik of Chennai had written to say that one day he was on the terrace and he was longing and longing for a darshan of Bhagwan. He was crying, his heart was burning with longing and it was a Purnima day. Suddenly, when he turned up, he didn't know what made him look at it, but when he did, he saw <coughs> the shadow of Bhagwan, that is the, probably the clouds had arranged themselves in the form of Yogi Ram Kumar. One could clearly see the turban and the outline of Bhagwan's form. He was thrilled, joyful. His heart was aflame with ineffable joy. That Bhagwan should respond to him so immediately and in a form that was recognizable by him. What grace, what a blessing. He must have cried his heart out. Of course, he described the whole thing and sent it to us. Now, Jayakartik says that he was afflicted by COVID. He took the vaccine injection twice. But soon after the second one, he developed symptoms of COVID fever. His parents were greatly agitated, they panicked, and so did he. He didn't know after the vaccination these things are happening. He was running a high temperature, nearly 103. And what was more, he had lost the smell, the sense of smell, 
and perished. Now he also panicked so much, but he was still hesitant to go to a doctor. He did not know what the doctor would say. Suppose he said, you get admitted in the hospital and he had to go through the whole thing again. He just couldn't afford it. So he was too scared to go to a doctor. Now at the time, he had, he got the slot in Namadhuni, conducted by the ashram in the abode. 4.50 to 5 o'clock was his turn, and he sang heartily, looking at Bhagwan in the abode. Jai Kartik says that suddenly he found himself, his whole being, not only his body, filled with a new strength, new energy, a new cheer. As he went on singing and singing, looking at the shrine in the abode, this is what happened to him. And in the newfound strength and cheer, somehow his fear vanished and then he made it a point to go to the doctor. The doctor said, the loss of sense of smell and taste is the last stage. Don't worry, you have got vaccinated already. In a day or two, this fever would also disappear and you would regain your sense of smell and taste. So he was assured, despite the assurance of uh, the doctor, the fever continued and he had not regained his sense of smell and taste. So what he was doing, you know the steaming, much, advi much advised, much advertised steaming, every day he was taking, he was putting in the boiling water, the neem leaves and the turmeric powder. Now one day, when I was describing in my satsang how a Pramain, the little boy, when he found his grandfather falling down with a near stroke because his eyes went up, his tongue got twisted and the whole body was sweating profusely and the heart was pounding. A Pramain was so scared, he ran inside, brought some vibhuti of the Adhishthana, the ashram, and then spread it, smeared it on the chest of his grandfather, and then on the forehead, and was shouting, Yogi Ram Sritkuma, Yogi Ram Sritkuma, at the same time pounding on the chest of his grandfather. The wonder of wonders, with the minutes, his grandfather regained normal. So as soon as he heard, Jayakartik heard this, suddenly he had an inspiration, a brain wave. What did he do? That day, when he was arranging for his team, he put some vibhuti from the Adhishthana the Ashram into the water, the boiling water, along with the turmeric powder and the neem leaves. He says, immediately there was a sudden smoke, a thick smoke of the vibhuti and the other ingredients and it, it filled his nose and throat and the lungs. That's what he felt. And soon after that, he gained his sense of smell and taste, and the fever too vanished. He calls it the miracle of miracles. He never expected. Of course, he got his inspiration from the morning story, 
and he did not fail him. His, his faith paid so well and the miracle happened, his fever vanished, he regained his sense of smell and taste. So this Nama, Yogi Ramsarakma Nama and Adhishtan Vibhuti, they work wonders. Now, uh, Priya Ashwin, we had already heard one story from her. That was, it was her daughter who used to see those ghost stories, ghost movies, terrifying, the movies of terror. And only late in the night, when everybody had left, she would sit in the drawing room and watch those horror movies. Naturally, after some time, she was so frightened, so scared, she was not able to sleep at all. The time dragged on, and for days she could not get a wink of sleep. And that's when she got so scared, her grandparents were telling her to stop it, but she wouldn't do it. But when this happened, she came running to her mother and said, you are writing the name of Yogi Ram Kumar. Will that help me too? Mother said, of course, it will. Then you know the story, the rest of the story, that soon she even took away the notebook of her mother, would keep it under her pillow, and then she had sound sleep, something she had not had for days. And after that she found out the efficacy of the name. And she too started writing too. And she wanted a book, a Nama book from the Ashram. This is exactly what her mother wanted. And that happened. Bhagwan created a situation where the girl had to run to Bhagwan's feet for refuge, and that worked the miracle. Now, Priya should say it's another miracle, that they had a plant in the garden, and it became completely dried up. They were all like dry twigs, the stems had become like dry twigs. There was no sign of life, life at all. It used to flower so beautifully before, but gradually everything stopped, and the plant seemed dead. And suddenly Priya took pity on the plant. She had no idea that the plant could survive at all. She also thought it was dead and gone. All the same, she felt a pity. So every day morning, she would come and touch the plant very affectionately and chant Yogi Ram Sarutkumar Nama and go away. To a great delight and wonder, after some time, one day, when she was doing it, suddenly she caught sight of a little green on one of those strings the dried up stems. She was absolutely thrilled. And then of course she continued her practice and soon there was a bud and soon the bud blossomed. To the delight of everyone at home, people who had given up hope. To their great wonder this miracle happened, she said, all by the name of Yogi Ram Nothing else was done. Now there is just one more. This Mambalam Vishwanathan is running a satsang right now. 
for people for 108 days. He says a very he has sent a narration of a wonderful story way back in 2002. Bhagwan had taken Mahasamadhi in 2001, February 20th. So the next year, the anniversary of this came. He so much wanted to come to the ashram and participate, but somehow he could not do it. So he decided to do the puja at his home itself. So he and his mother prepared everything and from morning the puja was going on, the bhajans were being sung with many devotees present, the namasa kirtan and songs of praises. So this went on and on till about 1.30 and of course they offered the food, the special food before Bhagwan, and after that they wanted to offer it to a sadhu. So he and his mother started on a bike with a prasad offered to Bhagavan in search of a sadhu. It struck Krishnadan to go to the temple in Venkatnara street or something. The street in Tinagar where there's a Mahavishnu temple. There he went before the temple and right in the front a sadhu was seated and the sadhu to a great shock looked every bit like our Bhagwan. He had a green turban on his head. His eyes were full of compassion at the same time it was sharp and penetrating. He had a dirty dhoti and a dirty kurta. And what was more, as soon as they went near, got down from the bike, the first thing that the sadhu said, Why are you coming so late? I've been waiting here for so long. All right. And then he took the prasad from them, raised his hand, very much in the fashion of Bhagwan and spoke the very words. Blessings. He spoke in English. Now you can imagine how thrilled Vishwanathan was. He was longing so much to come to the ashram, but Bhagwan came to the place where he was and accepted graciously the offered food. And then Bhagavan instructed them, now go, go to the temple, do your pradakshina there, and then go home. All very much like the way Bhagavan Yogi Ram always spoke. So immediately they obeyed the command, they went into the temple, and then when they finished their pradakshina, everything inside came out, they could not locate him anymore. He was completely lost here. Nobody knew where he had gone. Now why I am saying, be it Bhagwan's darshan in the form of a sadhu, be it a miracle because of his name. It's the same thrill, the heart is a flame with a thrill and ineffable joy. And these miracles happen only for the sake of the final miracle. And what is this final miracle? Our transformation. The faith gets deepened, the devotion gets strengthened, and what is more, we begin to walk the path of God, remembering His name, going through both inner and outer transformations. So for that great miracle of miracles to happen, these small, small miracles, and there are no small grace, mind you, they add up to cause the final miracle of transformation 
so that inside us, God, the Supreme God, stands revealed in all His infinite glory. So, to that Bhagavan, who is here now right in front of us, we shall offer our today's prayer. Bhagavan, we beseech you again and again and again, across your time, for your immediate divine intervention to free the entire world in general and India and India-like countries which are suffering now from the dreadful grip of this virulent virus and its variants and bring back normalcy in every aspect of life, everywhere. And Bhagwan, more than the pandemic, it is the panic in the hearts of people that's causing havoc. So we beg you again for that specific blessing which would remove this panic, which would uproot this panic and other negativities from the hearts of people. We beg you to stop the rapid rise of the disease, you enter all this medicine so that it would work, kill the entire clan of viruses, help reach out all those people who are absolutely distressed, frightened, waiting for the right treatment. Please bless them with what they need so that they get well soon and return home safely. And again, the great warriors of sacrifice, they are working so hard day and night at the very risk of their life. For the sake of the others, please give them protection and all-round illness. And Bhagwan, we beg you for a lift to economy and above all, constant remembrance of your name and the attitude of being a willing and fitting instrument in your hands, not in the hands of Maya, and that the supreme blessing for complete purification, complete transformation, when we could see only your grace, your presence and your grace in everything, in everyone around. Jai Ogiran Sukhmat.